good morning from a murky, cloudy Singapore. We just arrived here last night, actually at midnight. We flew yesterday from Kataklan in Boracay to Cebu, and then we had a long layover in Cebu City, and then we flew from Cebu to Singapore, and we got here at about half past 12 at midnight. Our plan was originally that we were actually gonna find somewhere to sleep within the airport, because we had read online that there's loads of like sleeping snooze areas, and obviously, if we can save ourselves the money on a hotel and stay in the airport, then obviously we were gonna do that. The plan didn't really work out and we ended up realising that you can only get to those after you've checked in for your flight, so it's kind of... Yeah, know, they're in the departure lounges rather departure. than in the arrivals, so actually that plan didn't work out very much. We ended up just looking around at 1am and eventually it came and stayed at the Cube Hostel here in Chinatown and actually it was really nice. We did pay a little bit more than probably we wanted to, but at the end of the day we're in Singapore and Singapore is expensive. Unfortunately, everywhere you're going to stay, you're going to be paying a bit more than you probably want to pay, but anyways, we're off now. We're going to do some exploring. I don't know where we're heading to first. I don't really know what's on the agenda, but come with us for a couple of days in Singapore. So for our first point of call in Singapore, we obviously wanted to head straight to the Marina Bay area. So we jumped on the metro, which we discovered very quickly is the quickest, easiest and cheapest way to get around Singapore. And it works just like the underground. So it was really easy. We had a little mooch around the mall, but we didn't buy anything because I should have known the majority of the shops in this mall are very high end, expensive designer brands and your broke traveler girl can't afford any of that. So we just had a browse around and then Callum needed to go into the Apple store to fix his AirPods. We also then discovered this fancy Apple dome outside the Marina Mall, which was pretty incredible. I actually thought it was a restaurant at first until I saw the Apple logo so of course we had to peep in there too and then we decided to head to the art science museum outside so we went to the art science museum which is just behind us here and we did have intentions of going in Callum was interested in looking at the future world part of the museum our friend who was literally here like yesterday or a couple of days ago she went to the museum and she said it cost her no more than 10 pounds when we just went it said that the admission was 30 singapore dollars which is 18 british pounds and i asked her where she was finding the 10 pound expedition and she said it was the same one apparently the price just fluctuates because on tiktok a couple of days ago somebody posted that it was only seven pounds so i don't really know why the price changes but she said to us it's actually not really worth it for 18 pound per person anyway so we've decided to ditch that idea well there's a lot more to see anyway for free so and plus we are still on a budget for the rest of our trip so we can't really just go all out here and there is a couple more things that we do need to pay for so right now we're just walking from the art science museum and we're going to go and see the gardens by the bay i'm sure everyone who's ever heard of anything from singapore knows about the gardens by the bay it's like the main tourist attraction here in singapore even if you don't recognize the name you will recognize the place yeah for sure we're also hoping to come back and visit this tomorrow night when we're a bit more dressed up we're going to go for a nicer dinner and some drinks but i just wanted to see it in the best of both worlds see it in the day and see it in the night oh is that like water and soap from there yeah So the money that we just saved by not going into that science museum, we've actually just put towards going into the flower dome and the cloud forest instead. You can buy the tickets for these attractions separately, but we decided to do a package deal. So we got both of them for 106 Singapore dollars, so 53 each. And I think that's about 32 British pounds. So it's not the cheapest of attractions by any means. And we did know that it was gonna be expensive, but it seems like it's gonna be beautiful and I think it should be worth the money. Top tip, if you're doing this, look online first, because it is a little bit cheaper as someone let us know. We usually do but we're just here so we thought why not and forgot yeah to be fair we didn't even think twice about booking it on the door when we probably should have thought about booking it online because it was a lot cheaper when i just looked let's take our sweaty faces and go to the flower dome thank you thank you oh it smells so nice in there wow the flower dome was very, very beautiful, but actually surprisingly not what I had expected. I think I had a vision in my head that there would just be flowers everywhere, like all up the ceiling, all on the walls, etc. And don't get me wrong, there was a lot of flowers, but just less, I think, than I had imagined. Fun fact, this flower dome actually holds the Guinness World Book of Records for the largest greenhouse in the world, so you learn something new every day. There was just masses, a variety of plants, succulents, trees, wooden sculptures, etc. We saw this fun little brain-looking stone and gigantic cactuses, 
basically just a lot of plants so we didn't actually spend that long in here but it did smell super fresh as i'm sure you can imagine and it was really interesting to look around for a little while then we headed to the cloud forest and between the two this one was definitely my favorite the reason it's called the cloud forest is because every couple of hours they let off fog in the whole dome which mists up and essentially makes it look like you're walking around inside a cloud we entered this session about 10 minutes before the fog so we were racing up to the viewing deck to see it and only ended up seeing the last few minutes because somehow we got mega lost inside all of the plants and couldn't find our way around but this was just stunning and i didn't feel like we were inside at all our next point of call was of course the gardens by the bay just to see what they looked like in daylight as well as lit up by night guys it's just started raining in singapore actually it's not just started raining i think it's actually been raining most of the day we've just been under the shelter but this is where we're sat right now hiding out from the rain we made it to gardens by the bay and they are so beautiful it's so weird looking at them in person because i feel like i've been looking at them online for literally so long but it's just a bit of a drizzly day today and i am getting a little bit grouchy i feel like because we had such a long travel day yesterday and i had a very broken sleep last night i'm just ready to check into our new hotel and then have a chilled evening it's so frustrating because obviously Obviously we're only here for two days so I feel like there's so much that I want to see and want to do but I feel so exhausted and we haven't done like a long walking day since we were in like Bangkok pretty much so we've not done like a busy sightseeing day in a long long while and I feel like I've just I wasn't ready for it <laughs> Hello and good morning from another day in Singapore. Last night we quite literally did what we said we were gonna do. We ended up going back after it started raining. We tried to find some dinner, couldn't find anywhere to go near our new hotel. And then we ended up just getting some noodles from 7-Eleven and having a chilled night. This morning we've woken up and actually we are meeting today one of my followers who lives in Singapore. She messaged me when she saw we were here and she's basically asked if she could meet us for breakfast and show us around the local area a little bit. So of course we said we'd love that. So we're just waiting for her now at the train station. We've also made a reservation for dinner tonight. There was a lot of places that were booked up already because obviously we left it last minute. So there wasn't availability for the places that we actually wanted to go. We've been recommended a few rooftop bars to go to in Singapore. But again, because we left it so last minute, unfortunately they're all booked up for tonight. So we're gonna see what we can find, but I'm not sure if we're gonna manage it today. But anyways, we're gonna see what today has in store for us in Singapore. So this is Lynette. She is showing us around the city of Singapore today. You've lived in Singapore your whole life, right? Yeah. And she's been a saviour because we have no idea what we're doing here. We don't really know the best spots to go to or anything to visit and she's been an absolute angel. She's basically planning a whole day for us. I try my best. Yeah. Thank you so much for meeting yeah. us today anyway. You're honestly saving saving our asses. We do not know what we're doing. Where's the next place we're headed to? Um, Bugis. Bugis. Hajili. Okay, so this is basically a colourful street yeah, a lot of um, shots. I, I would say it's more. Um, I don't really know how to describe it. It's like a photo worthy yeah, yeah. shops and graffiti and stuff yeah. like that. So we're gonna go and visit there, take a few pictures there, and then see wherever we head to next. So Lynette has brought us to this cafe to try a traditional Singapore breakfast. Mine is just basically toast with butter and sugar. Callum has got kaya toast, which is, what is the, is it coconut did you say? Yeah, spread. it's a slab of butter and coconut spread. We've also ended up with two soft boiled eggs as well. Mine looks like <laughs> disgusting at this point. Apparently this is a traditional Singapore breakfast, so I'm really glad to be trying it. So this is a duck sauce, so it's a bit salty, so you can just put a couple of chocolate on it. Oh, you can mix it a little bit, and then you can add some duck as well. That is going to be so salty. I think I've ruined it already. So I'm not going to lie, this doesn't look doesn't look very appealing at this stage. Is this really salty then, this one? It's a little salty, yeah. Oh my god, that comes out so quick. It's a texture thing for me. Yeah. It's like, it's still half gooey, yeah. do you know what I mean? I mean, it just tastes like egg, but it's the texture of it. It's so weird to get used to. So we've also got a lovely little gift from Lynette. These are the salted egg fish skin crunchy crisps. Apparently this is quite a popular thing, right? Yep. Popular snack here in Singapore. So Callum's gonna do another little taste test. As you can tell, Callum's the one who does the taste test because I'm just scared to try everything. Mm. Really? Yeah. Fishy? Not too fishy. They're just like nice and crispy.
So as I mentioned before, Lynette thought that Bugis would be a good place for us to visit to see all of the colourful buildings and street art there as it's a pretty good spot for photo taking. So of course we did some of that. Other than that though, there wasn't a lot in the area. So afterwards we decided to head towards the airport. We had mentioned to Lynette that we hadn't actually seen Jewel yet. So she wanted to take us there. So we just hopped on the metro from Bugis and we've just ended up at Changi Airport. Sounds a bit weird because we're just coming to the airport just to look around, but I'm sure anyone who has ever seen Singapore online probably knows that Singapore Airport is like the best airport in the world. So we're just gonna go have a little look around, see what there is. The beauty of this airport speaks for itself. It's honestly unlike anything I've ever seen before, especially inside an airport. But here's some fun facts about Changi Airport for you in case you didn't know. So it was conceptualized in 1975 and then took six years in total to complete. And it cost the Singapore government 1 billion Singapore dollars, which was the largest amount that had been spent on any public project at the time. It has understandably won multiple global awards. It oversees 400,000 flights a year. There are more than 400 shopping outlets inside the vicinity of the airport. And you can swim, watch a movie, movie and visit theme parks all inside the airport complex. Lynette's now leaving us, she's got to go to work. Thank you so much for everything, you've been amazing. At Lynette's recommendation, Callum has gone for chicken and rice. How much was this? $5.90. That's not even that terrible to be fair, that's like three or four pounds. Yeah, three, that's three pound fifty. Two hours later. You can see you holding the light <laughs> in the back. Hello. Callum and I have come out for a little dinner. We've decided to treat ourselves to a nice dinner. We've been craving a steak for a while, so that's what we're gonna have tonight. This is like a celebratory engagement dinner because when we were in the Philippines, we didn't really have a chance to like sit down and actually have a nice meal like this. We've come to a restaurant called Florian in Singapore. It has got a rooftop bar as well, but it was a little bit busy up there. There's a birthday party or something going on. So we're gonna eat our dinner down here and then we're gonna go to a rooftop bar afterwards for another drink. I think we're both gonna go for the Angus ribeye steak and we've both got a cheeky glass of wine to go with that too. So yeah, really looking forward to having a nice, civilized, proper meal after eating so much fast food in the last few weeks slash months. Watch the super trees come to life as we unveil a dazzling showcase of lights and musical trees. Tonight we present the Enchanted Woods. Pick a spot, grab your cameras, and enjoy the show. Pretty fucking cool. That was amazing. <laughs> that was amazing. I'd take that over firework display any day of the week. Just look at this, like look at our background right now, honestly. Feeling very grateful to be here and have watched this. I feel like this is one of those things that you just watch online, you've seen it on YouTube videos or whatever, but we've literally just watched that in person with our own eyes and that was pretty fucking cool. The like, fact that something like this is free as well. Yeah. Then you can just rock up here. They kind of, I suppose they kind of yeah, have to make it free because you can see it from a lot of points in the city. Like,
like you could go up to a hotel and watch yeah. it from the hotel room otherwise like still for 15 minutes you could literally just sit and watch and wow that was amazing so today is the day that we are sadly leaving Singapore. We're headed today to Malaysia and we're starting in Johor Bahru. So last night, I think the last thing that I filmed was the light show at the Gardens by the Bay. But before that, we were at dinner. I think I said I was gonna update you about the dinner, but I never did. So our dinner last night ended up being really nice actually. And it wasn't that expensive considering where we are in Singapore. I thought it was gonna be a lot more. I think we ended up paying about 85 pounds for two steaks, two glasses of wine and a starter to share as well. But that was really Really lovely just to spend some nice quality time together and sit down and have a nice meal from there we then headed to gardens by the bay to watch the light show it only happens at 7 45 and 8 45 every evening so we had to be there by 8 45 otherwise we were going to miss it but as you would have seen we did end up watching it it was absolutely spectacular it was just incredible to see that in person then we headed back last night after we were very very tired tourists and this morning we woke up we got some breakfast and then we headed to the post office we actually decided a little while ago that when we got into Singapore we were gonna send some stuff home because we just have so much stuff with us in our backpacks we ended up sending home about five kilograms of stuff between us and it only cost us about what was it 80 Singapore Ooh. dollars so 48 pounds uh, there you go it was a pretty easy process we just found which post office we were gonna go to online first and then we went there and it was all pretty easy to do but now we are about to head to the MRT to get on the train to go towards the Malaysian border where we're then gonna cross and head into Malaysia I'm gonna leave this Singapore vlog here because I I feel like there's not going to be a lot else going on before we head to Malaysia now but thank you so much for watching if you have made it this far into the video if you have enjoyed watching then please make sure to leave a big thumbs up leave a comment down below and also subscribe to the channel if you have not already we plan on spending a few weeks in Malaysia so do look out for the Malaysia vlogs coming very soon if they're not already up on my channel but I'm gonna leave this one here thanks again for watching and I'll see you in the next one bye